Unfamiliar environment. For me too, kind of. I am sitting here on the incredibly plush, comfortable carpet on my second listening room in my house. This is a recent development and the story of how I got here is pretty interesting. As you guys know, I have my office upstairs. In that office, I have my clear audio, my Fluence floor speakers, my Marantz receiver. It's where I listen to records when I'm not at the store. It's a little crowded. It's not the ideal listening room by any stretch of the imagination. It doesn't have ideal speaker placement or the right space to let everything breathe. It is certainly put together in a way that I would like to eventually change if I have another house down the road that has a bigger space for listening to music, but it works for me for now. So I was approached by a company called Dumb Audio, D-U-M, and no, this isn't Nathan Fielder doing a dumb Starbucks thing, although I kind of wish it was. This is a company in Canada that has made a mid-fi audio system that looks beautiful, and they wanted me to try it out. My initial thought was, no, I'm content with what I have, I like my setup, but then I got to thinking, my downstairs dining room was just a storage basically for records, for boxes, whatever it may be, it was not being utilized to the room's full potential. So then it struck me, what if I made a second listening room? See, the one upstairs is cluttered. It is not good for guests. I very rarely have listened to a record with a guest in that room. And that's a problem because I would love to share my collection with more people, people that come by my house, et cetera, et cetera, without shoving them into a tiny room absolutely chock full of records with very little way to navigate unless you're me and you have your system. This room that I'm sitting in right now will serve as that. It is also serving as a purgatory room. Now let me explain what that means. So I have too many records. But the thing is, I need to have a way to decipher what records go into the permanent collection or which ones go to the record store. And when I buy a record, I don't always know the answer to that. So this is what I'm calling purgatory. All these records behind me, these are going to be tested on this system to determine if I like the audio quality enough, if I like the album enough for it to go up there. And if I don't love the album enough to keep it, leaves the house and goes to the record store. So this is kind of that middle antechamber between my collection and the store. It's a nice little system that I'm really excited to test out. So when I started looking at the dumb audio stuff on their site, the first thing I was blown away with was how beautiful all of the pieces were. After coming up with this idea for a second listening room, I said to them, you know what? Sure. If you want to send me a system, I will happily do a video with my thoughts on it. But I made it very clear with them that I wasn't going to just give them a good review if they sent me a system. I refuse to be sent something under the pretense that I will then give it a glowing review. I hate that stuff with other areas on the internet and I do not want to be a part of that. They agreed, they stood by their system, they believed that it was absolutely worthy, so I was excited to give it a listen. I'm just gonna read something real quick on their site. They said, we've purposefully designed our products to be simple to set up and operate. There are no screens, algorithms, software updates, or terms and conditions that will ever complicate your experience. And that's true. All of this is very analog. There's a Bluetooth component I'll get to, but even so that's more ancillary to the main mission, which is just to simplify the idea of getting analog sound into your home. There are definitely some people that love doing research and love going through forum posts and reviews and deciding which components they wanna get for their setup, whether it's the initial setup or an upgraded setup. But on the flip side of that, I know a ton of people personally who get a lot of anxiety about it, who get stressed out about it, who don't want to go through the painstaking motions of figuring out every piece that goes with every piece and the best deal for everything and where to find it, etc., etc., And they're just like, here's my money, what do I get? This is for them. So as soon as it arrived, my first thought was that it looked even better than the pictures. The art deco style of all of these pieces are really stunning in person, even more so than what I saw on the site. I think this would absolutely be a talking piece in anybody's home. I love it. I think everything looks super high quality and thankfully it sounds pretty damn good too. And while personally, I think it's a little tough to beat the visual of some beautiful vintage gear, whether it's a Macintosh or a Marantz or even some Pioneer models, some of those are so beautiful um, that it's kind of hard to replicate that with the modern design. But of all the modern turntables that people cycle through, I think this setup is one of the most interesting and beautiful options out there. Now, before I talk about the gear itself, I am not an audiophile. And I've talked about this before, I am not a gear guy. I appreciate gear, I enjoy listening to high-end gear, I enjoy audiophile pressings, and I can discern the difference between one and one that is not. That being said, I am not an audiophile. I cannot speak to gear in those terms. I have not heard a massive amount of gear, so I'm only able to speak to what I know in my personal experiences and rank those against each other. So this video is going to be coming from kind of your average layman's perspective. It is not coming from an absolute tech head who spends their life analyzing gear. This is coming from somebody who has had a multitude of systems, owns a record store, has heard a lot of systems, and this is kind of my experience with this gear 
comparatively to everything else. So let's start with the passive subwoofer. I've actually never had a subwoofer in any of my setups. This is my first experience with them. It really, really amplifies the bass and it's adjustable. And I think it made a massive difference when I added it into the chain, which is the last thing I did, to hearing kind of how full of life the music can really be as a full body experience. Uh, I think this is an excellent woofer. Does it compare to others of the price range? I don't know. This one on their site is $500, but I think it looks and sounds fantastic. And then let's talk about the turntable. It looks really beautiful. It's semi-auto, so it automatically stops, which is always nice. It comes with the Ortofon Red cartridge, which is a very nice cartridge to start off with. And if you didn't know, you can easily upgrade that to the Ortofon Blue, which is not very difficult to do if you want a nice upgrade a few months or years down the road. You can also swap the whole cartridge out if you want. It has an MDF plinth, a hardwood veneer. It really does look like a beautiful piece. It comes with the aluminum tone arm, a dust cover. It is a nice turntable. At $600, you're really getting something that feels well-made and functions beautifully. And then we have the amp over here. Also MDF and hardwood, it has tone control. It has a Bluetooth feature if you do wanna stream things to it, which is a nice option for those that want to listen to records when they're in the room, but also wanna use their system as a digital streaming source when they're in the kitchen or doing something else around the house. I like the simplistic and like I said, art deco style of the amp. I think it is a very beautiful piece. Aesthetically, it might be the least appealing of all the different components, but it still matches really nicely with everything else. By least aesthetically appealing, I mean that the knobs on the front are maybe a little underwhelming compared to how beautifully thought out I think everything else is. And the amp sits at 600 bucks as well. And the speakers, the stars of the show. These speakers, which the owner of Dumb really said was his favorite part of the whole thing too, blew my mind. They are definitely, after listening to this for a few months, better than my upstairs Fluence tower speakers. They are so rich and they provide such a beautiful detailed sound. Every time I'm in here listening to a record, I'm really blown away at how great these speakers are. And again, I can't really speak to why, but having listened to these for a few months and the ones upstairs for a few years, I think that these beat it out. These speakers are 500 bucks each. So you can also get the table, the amp, and the speakers as a bundle for 1900, which is a nice discount if you are gonna plan on getting the entire system, which you don't have to. You can use any of these components with anything else, which is cool. But for the visual aesthetic, I think if you are gonna get any piece of this, all of them go very nicely together. So. Like I said, a few months of listening to this and what do I think? It's not a cheap system. It definitely isn't cheap, but it's not overpriced. I really think that for what you pay, you get a system that is of that value sonically, visually. I think that it is properly priced for the product that you're getting. Now, not everybody wants to spend that much on a setup, especially if it's, let's say your first setup. I have lots of people that come in the store all the time and I'm talking to them about how to get into vinyl and the pitfalls of kind of cheaping out and getting like the really, really low end stuff. You won't deal with any of those pitfalls with this system. This is a really nice, first setup or first upgrade setup if you have the funds for it. Also worth mentioning is that they have a 60 day, no questions asked return policy. So you can always get it, try it out in your space and see if it wows you the way it has me. Now, while the dumb audio ecosystem is not for everyone, I do think it could be for anyone. It's a very simple way to get a beautiful looking and sounding audio system in your house. Like I said though, not everyone wants to spend this much money on a starter setup, but if you have been thinking about upgrading your basic setup, or if you have the money to throw around, this is not a bad option to get started with. And as for this listening room, I would love for you guys to give me some thoughts about how I can improve this in terms of the decoration, in terms of utility pieces. Uh, I definitely have a piece that I'm waiting for for that wall right there that's gonna be coming in this week. I gotta get custom frame that I'm very excited for. A beautiful foil and black light piece by Blunt Graphics, one of my favorite studios actually located in Oregon, which is cool. And I would like to get where I am sitting right now in Ottoman because I think that uh, having something to put my feet on while I'm on the couch listening to a record is wonderful. So definitely give me some thoughts about ways I can improve this. Maybe I'll do some LEDs back here. I know those are always pretty cool. And yeah. I'm really excited to keep building out this listening room and keep enjoying this dumb audio system. So thanks to them for sending me this gear. I really was impressed. Uh, I'm not gonna just say that like I said, because it was given to me. I'm saying it because I spent time with it for months. I told them I had to spend a little time before I really could make a video and they were cool with that. And so far, I really don't have any complaints. The only negative for some is that it is a little pricey, but like I said, you get what you pay for in this hobby. Thank you guys so much for watching this video. There's gonna be more coming soon. I'm gonna go throw a record on though, so take it easy.
Oh,